Maybe you're new to Linux or you're just starting to get interested in free and open source software and you want to try it out at some point in the near future, but you're not really sure what good free and open source alternatives are actually out there to start replacing the software you're already using. Today, I'm going to go over a lot of the applications that I personally would recommend to fill those gaps that you might be seeing. Now, for my core audience, I'm not going to be going over the most minimal applications out there. Sure, you can do everything you want inside of a terminal, but but I don't really think that's a very practical way when you're used to working with graphical applications. However, if they're worth mentioning, I may bring them up in those specific contexts. Now, I totally get that for some people, you can't just go and switch to Linux because you need some specific software that's only available on Windows or Mac OS. Let's say you need the Microsoft Office Suite or you need Photoshop or you need Premiere or Final Cut if you're on Mac OS. I totally get that. This is more directed towards home users and people who are hobbyists who can very easily swap out what they want to swap out. I think the best place to start is with your web browser and judging by the analytics, most people out there are using Google Chrome. If you're not using Google Chrome and you're on macOS, then you're almost certainly using Safari. Now Chrome is actually based on an open source project known as Chromium. Now Chromium doesn't have some of the extra Google features in it along with the extra Google tracking, but if you want an experience that is very much the same as Google Chrome with a slightly different color scheme, Honestly, Chromium is a good way to go. However, if you want something that is a bit more privacy focused, but still supports all of the exact same extensions because it is still based on Chromium, I'm going to recommend using Brave. Now, I totally get why some people may not like Brave because it does have this built-in crypto ad system, but if you don't want that, you can disable that and use it like any other Chromium browser. Now, I obviously do have to mention the biggest browser engine that isn't Chromium, and that is going to be Firefox. Now, there are a bunch of forks of Firefox you could go and use, but I'm going to recommend just sticking with Firefox. The problem with a lot of the Firefox forks is they'll seriously lack behind on security patches and when you're doing things like online shopping or banking, you want to make sure you're actually using a secure browser. When it comes to your Office Suite, you're probably using the Microsoft Suite, so Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and all the other stuff that exists. So my recommendation for this, there's not really much of a choice in this regard, it's going to be LibreOffice. So Writer is Word, Calc is Excel, and then Impress is PowerPoint, but they're color coded in the exact same way, so you are probably able to guess anyway. Now, it's not going to be a perfect replacement. If you're really heavy on using macros in Excel, you might have to rewrite those. Some of the things you wanna do might not work, and the UI, is going to look different, but in the case of the UI, I think this is actually an improvement. So rather than having the ribbon layout like you see nowadays, it's more akin to what you saw back in 07 Word before they completely destroyed the layout. And any of your existing Word documents will open up in this application, but anything using some of the more high level formatting might break a little bit. If it's just, hey, I have a bunch of text, it's going to work exactly the same in both applications, assuming you have the exact same font installed. Now, if you're instead a user of the Google Suite, even though this is gonna require a little bit of setup yourself, probably the best option to go with is Nextcloud. This is gonna support pretty much everything you want from the Google Suite, along with having a built-in messaging app and also working as a replacement for Dropbox or Google Drive, but you are going to either have to self-host it or find a hosting provider. Luckily on the Nextcloud website, they actually do have an explanation about why you might wanna do one over the other. And if you do decide to go down the provider route, they do actually show you the providers that actually exist. I would recommend if you know how to do so, go and self-host Nextcloud so you actually have control over your data. There are so many good free and open source email clients out there that it feels like a waste to be using Outlook or Gmail. So my recommendation is going to be Thunderbird. Now Thunderbird is a Mozilla project and being a Mozilla project, it shares a lot of visual similarities with Firefox. Now. Unlike Firefox, it doesn't have its new UI, which is a good thing, and I don't really know how to describe Thunderbird. It obviously does all the email stuff you're going to want, but there are so many plugins for it, 
and you can make this application basically do most of what you want to do on your system if you really want to. I wouldn't recommend adding all those features into it, but if you really want to, the option is going to be there. Now, I use a password manager because I want to ensure that all my passwords are really strong passwords. And if you're still somehow using LastPass after they completely destroyed their free tier, just go and migrate over to Bitwarden. It's another web-based option. This is the one that I personally use. And honestly, it does everything that LastPass did in the free tier anyway. So there's no reason not to use it. Now, I get that some people don't want to use an online password manager. In which case, I would recommend using something like KeePass XC. And then if you want to use it on your phone, basically just synchronize the database manually. Like with your email client, when it comes to a PDF reader, there are so many good options out there that it doesn't really matter which one you pick. Go and use something like Ocular if you want a bunch of extra features in your PDF reader so you can go and like mark it up and do all of the stuff that you might want to do if you're modifying a PDF or if you just want something where it's a very simple application and you just want to read it. Go and use Zathura. Zathura is a great application. You can add a bunch of extra features into it if you want to, but out of the box, like it doesn't even have a scroll bar. It does everything you need if you just want to read. Otherwise, another good option is your web browser. Most web browsers nowadays have a PDF reader built into them, so if you don't want to download one, you might as well just use this one. When it comes to note taking, there isn't really something as featureful as Evernote. So the best option in this case is probably going to be Joplin. So there is a graphical client for this along with a terminal client. And if you want to see an in-depth look at this application, I recommend going and checking out the video I did on this because I actually used to use Joplin quite a bit. Back then, I actually planned all of my videos out inside of Joplin and it's a great application, but it doesn't do everything Evernote's going to do. While there are simpler music player solutions, I'm going to suggest two things that are grouped together. So firstly, go and set up MPD, the music player daemon. This is a little program that sits in the background that handles things like playing and pausing the audio, your playlist, your library, all of the other stuff you'd want a music player to actually handle. But by itself, it's not really that useful. Then go and find yourself an MPD client. So there are terminal clients, there are web clients, there are graphical clients. In my case, I use NCM PCPP. This is a terminal client because I don't really need to see the music as it's playing, but if you want to, there are plenty of good graphical options as well. The reason why I suggest this is because once you have MPD set up, it gives you so much freedom in what you actually want to use. When it comes to your video player, if you're not already using VLC, why are you not using VLC? The only reason to not use VLC is because you realize the VLC does way, way too much for a video player. Things like having built-in transcoding and modifying subtitles. And instead, you start using something like, I don't know, MPV. MPV is just a video player. It has a very simple interface. You can go and add a bunch of extra plugins to it to actually add really cool features to it. But out of the box, all it does is play video. For video editing, the free and open source world is still really lacking behind, but I get by perfectly fine by using Caden Live and also by using Olive. Now, Olive is an alpha, so Olive might crash a lot. It doesn't crash that much anymore, but it certainly might crash a lot. Caden Live is a much more established piece of software. It does a lot of really cool stuff. The problem I have with Caden Live, though, is it is quite slow. So if you have a slower system or you have a ton of tracks, you will start to notice it kind of slow to a crawl. It works pretty well though, so I would recommend using either. Now we're going into the rapid fire section because there's not really any reason to have a discussion about these because you probably already know about them and know they're already good software. So if you want to do some image editing and you don't want to use Photoshop, GIMP is probably going to be your best option. If you want to do some vector graphics like you would in Adobe Illustrator, well, Inkscape, another amazing option. Both these applications I use fairly heavily. If you want to do some drawing because you're a digital artist, well, Critter is an amazing application as well. This is another one that I've been getting really into recently. And if you're doing 3D modeling, 
you're probably already using Blender. I don't think I need to tell you that Blender exists. Uh, if you happen to be using Maya, Blender is a thing. And if you're a game dev using something like Unity, while I'm not a game dev myself, from all of the indie dev vlogs I've seen on YouTube, Godot seems like a really, really competent engine. And it's not just indie devs who are using this, it seems like Sonic Colors Ultimate is also going to be made in Godot. Now this is still roughly a rumor. Uh, the reason why this came about is because one of the artists working on the game showed a picture of their desktop and they were doing some stuff in Godot and Godot stuff won't translate directly over to Unity, so that pretty much does confirm that. This is by no means a comprehensive list of all of the software out there. I'm sure if you think for a couple of minutes, you'll come up with some software area that you want a replacement for that I didn't go over. If there is anything you do want to know about, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. I was going to say description, comment section down below, and I will try to give my best alternative for that use case. I may not know every single type of application, but I can certainly try in cases where I do know. And if you do try out Linux, I guarantee there's going to be areas of software that you really didn't even consider existing until you use the operating system. For example, things like your window manager or desktop environment, your display server technology, and a bunch of other stuff like that, which is just handled for you over on Windows. I think that's going to be it for me, and if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon, subscribe, start in LiberaPay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.